Jana is a is in architecture for children since 1996. She's an independent teacher and a teacher in the uh, School for Architecture for Children since 1994. And uh, through the years, she has created uh, nets and databases, didactic material, and uh, subjects of architecture in education. She's been leading these workshops, and Dana, thank you very much for being here. Buenos días a todos. Bueno, voy a ir directamente al grano, al asunto. Hoy, for children and youth in Finland. I will first say a few words about the education system in Finland, then make a historical overview of architecture education in Finland, and then talk about architecture schools Lastu and Arki, and then the last topic will be ARC in for Finland as a promoter of architecture education at schools. So Architecture Information Centre Finland is where I work. And here you can see the education system in Finland, the compulsory one, which is for everyone on the right side. So when I today talk about basic education, I talk about that compulsory, ordinary schools, primary, secondary, and upper secondary schools. But then we have another system called basic education in the arts. And that is also goal-oriented and progressing from one level to another and it teaches children skills in self-expression and capabilities needed in later art education or any education. But that is voluntary, so not every children goes to this system. And, and the pro providers of it, they may charge moderate fees for the education. And it's also a three-stage curricula in there. It's possible to study early years education, which is under school age, from three to six years. Basic studies, which is from seven to 12 years. And advanced studies, which is from 13 to 18 years. <coughs> then the historical overview on architecture education. The first steps towards organized activity were taken in, in the beginning of 1980s. And uh, the first one was the birth of visual, visual art schools, which started by the school renewal in 1972 to 77, which weakened the status of art education at basic education in normal schools. And a new school system was born as the visual art teachers founded the first visual art school to improve the situation. And in 1982, the visual art schools around Finland got organized and founded the Finnish Association of Art Schools for Children and Young People, which now has over 70 member organizations. Many of these schools offer some short, of, some short courses in architecture. And one of them, Uvascular Visual Art Schools, is actually one of the pioneers of basic education in architecture beside the two schools specialized only into architecture. So it's an important school as well. <laughs> the awakening of interest among architects. 
At first, it was individual enthusiasts who participated in the discussion on the importance of art education in comprehensive schools. And it was the Finnish Association of Architects who first generated a theme year of built environment for comprehensive schools and gymnasiums. And that was in 1980, 1981. And, and the association also published the first environmental education guidebook, emphasizing built environment for the theme year. And as a starting point of architecture, it, it presented the typology of Finnish landscape and then went on forward presenting architecture very, very thoroughly. And, and, and that book was a really good one for the, uni, for the people who were studying to be teachers at the university, but it was perhaps a little bit too much for teachers in schools to use it in their, their own education, teaching. Well, in 1990s, there was a wide range of develop, developing actions. The basic education in arts started. There was the act regulating basic education in the arts became effective in 1992. And the first national core curricula for basic education in the arts was published in 93. And the curricula determined the objectives and core contents for nine different art forms. One of them is architecture. Basic education in arts is funded by statutory government transfers based on number of inhabitants and government grants based on the confirmed number of lesson hours given per year. The two visual arts schools offering basic education in the arts and specializing in architecture were established in 1993. It was Arki in Helsinki and Lastu in Lapinlahti in the middle of Finland. Also a third school was established, but it never reached the status of a school giving basic education in the arts and it's not working anymore. And according to the curricula, the aims of architecture education for children are to help children to become sensitive to architecture and to better understand it, help citizens understand their responsibility of the environment and arouse the interest in influencing its future, distribute knowledge about the diversity and uniqueness of environments, teach children to evaluate and acknowledge the qualities of architecture and teach words and concepts which enable children to comprehend architecture and have conversations about it. Then there is the Finnish architectural policy. The government architectural policy program was published in 1998 and followed by several regional and municipal policies. The program suggested that the National Board of Education should strengthen the position of architectural education in the school curriculums. <laughs> and that the needs of architectural education should be taken into consideration in the execution of the program for linking schools and the wider cultural settings. In this case, it means the, the, the aims of children's cultural policy. And all of these reach, regional and municipal policies adopted these suggestions and sent, set out aims for furthering architecture education in the, their area. And I'm very proud of the minister, prime minister at that time who wrote the forward word for the policy, 
and he said, the architectural policy emphasizes both the citizens' right and duty to take responsibility of their own environments. This is why architectural education and information about architecture needs to be enhanced. <laughs> According to fin Finland's constitution, all citizens are entitled to a good environment and responsibility for looking after it. And the renewed land use and building act approved approved in 1999, improved people's opportunities to participate in the decision-making and strengthened interactive planning culture. <laughs> At the time, architecture education was recognized as an important means of developing knowledge, skills and comprehension, and thus offering tools for discussion and participation. The status of architecture strengthens within basic education in 2000s. And it was the Association of Finnish Architects who made a survey, which was published also as a report in 1999. The result of the survey was information about approximately 200 projects from 45 Finnish towns. According to the survey, architecture education had been given to children and other adults by public and private institutions, both as part of fixed curriculum and as leisure time activity. And despite the considerable variety of projects examined, it was clear that there were common needs for further development. The report states that architecture should give a prominent place in school curricula. And that is what happened in 2004. But even if architecture education integrates the objectives and contents of several subjects, the main emphasis on architecture is within the visual art curriculum. In the primary and secondary, curriculum, the content of the education is divided into four main themes, and one of which is environmental aesthetics, architecture and design. And studying the theme is compulsory from the first to seventh grade students. And after that, it's voluntary. In the upper secondary schools visual art curriculum, there are two obligatory courses, one of which is environment, place, and space, and it's about architecture. Then the first children's culture policy was published, and the network of 20 children's culture centers developing cultural activities was established in 2003 by the Ministry of Education. And, and, and they have the so-called cultural education plan that all the children and young people of the region get in contact with the culture institutions, the cultural heritage and different art forms. And as the, these activities take place during the school day, democracy and accessibility are ensured. Each center has its national development area, architecture, and environmental culture school, LASTU, represents architecture education in the network. And also, in 2000s, architecture education, the first website, national website, and some new mate teaching material was published. And we have an Arts Council of Finland who has funded numerous architecture education projects. And it has also nominated the first regional artist for architecture education in 2004. And the job description was or included networking, 
organizing seminars, contributing to the development of database and teaching material, and giving advice on architecture education. And this year, the uh, new nationwide regional artist has, for architecture education has started to her work. In 2010s, there's been a lot of new things. The winds are changing for us. In, the big, big, in 2012, Architecture Information Center was established. And among other things, it promotes architecture education for children and young people. And there is a new proposal for children's, children's culture policy program. And there are some interesting aims, like the first aim is to establishing a national center for the promotion of children's culture and art education. And what is important for architecture education are the three aims increasing the all-round teaching provided to children in general education by means of art and culture, developing the environments of children and youth based on their needs and hearing their views, and increasing the teaching of children's culture and the related methods and pedagogy in class teachers and other types of art education. And now we are, there's also a renewal of our national core, curri core curricula of basic education. And it, it, it brings a lot of changes. Subject teaching is not being abolished totally, although the new core curriculum will bring about some changes. It gives more space to integrating cross-subject entities. It, uh, the new curricula emphasizes the joy of learning and the pupil's active role. Architecture and other visual art forms are not named at visual art or any other subjects curricula as they were before. But the built environment, however, is mentioned as a resource and learning environment that should be used not just in visual art, but in almost every su subject. So that gives us a lot of new possibilities, I think. And then we have the key projects of the government program. We have a new government, and one of the key projects concerns knowledge and education. And, and uh, mm, there are six sub-projects, sub and one of them is access to art and culture. And within that sub-project, the Ministry of Education and Culture will, will fund projects that will take high-quality art and culture education, including architecture, into primary and secondary schools afternoons as architecture, for example, architecture clubs. And then I will go to the second topic and have so also some pictures involved here. So I will tell you about Arki and Lasto, the architecture schools for children and youth. Arki was established in 93 by a reg registered organization, the members of which were all architects and ar students of architecture. And Ar Arki offers courses in Helsinki, Espoo, and Vanta cities, where about 20% of the Finnish people live. It provides long-term architecture courses weekly for 500 students aged from 4 to 19 years, which means about 3,400 3, teaching hours yearly. And Arki has also international activity, a lot of it, and it has established the Arki International Company. So that works in a little bit different way. It's a, it's a company, it's not an association. 
and it has now about 350 students increase. And ARCI follows the national core curricula for basic education in the arts and its advanced syllabus of architecture. So ARCI's activities are funded by both statutory government transfers and the government grants. It gets them both. And here you can see the structure of architectural studies in ARCI, starting from preliminary studies, studies, then basic studies and advanced studies, and also there are some extra courses, theme courses, which you can see on the right side. And they are about product design, miniature modeling, sculpture, fine art, computer-aided design, and hut building. <clears throat> ARCI's activities are long-term architectural education, short-term architectural education, long-term courses, events, workshops for schools and kindergartens, ordered activities and teacher training. And basic education in architecture for, for 600 pupils at the moment takes most of the teaching hours, about 69%. Uh, but on the other hand, 5,000 children and young people every year take part to the other activities, which are funded by different means, some of them by, by fees, some of them by the city, by the government, different kind of funding. And here are some flashes from ARCIS activities, hot building camps in, in summertime and snow building in wintertime. ARCI has a children's architecture gallery which shows all the works of the children. Most of the time it's open for, for the big public. It has public workshops and exhibitions. It has workshops for schools, ordinary schools. And it gives teacher training and pre produces pedagogical material in cooperation with the teachers at the schools. And it does a lot of collaboration with the museums. This is from Espo Art Museum. And one of its specialities is children's participation processes. And here you can see Helsinki City Planning uh, or Helsinki City Planning Department participated 100 ARCI students in the city planning process of Hernesari in Helsinki. It, the process facilita was facilitated by five architects. It lasted six months and altogether 500 hours of work. And each age group of ARCI participated in ways suitable for their age, interest and skills. The children's proposal was displayed in public spaces alongside city planners' proposals. Discussions were held. People could also voice their opinion in the internet. And today they are deciding, or the, today or in, 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 in near future, Helsinki is deciding how to build actually this area. And I have to tell you that I think the children's proposal, which you can see in the picture, it's far more interesting than the one that is published now. Then about the other school, LASTU, Architecture and Environmental Culture School. It was established in 1993 by a registered organization, the members of which re represent the associations of architects, industrial designers, interior architects, visual art teachers and child welfare. 
and it offers basic education in architecture for children and young people for, and follows the basic syllabus of the core curricula. So it hasn't got advanced studies, it, has, it hasn't got so many students, so it's, it's only funded by the one, one government grant. And LASTU has operated as a representative of architecture at the network of children's culture centers. And it's, most of its students come through that. So it, 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 um, it's funded by this, this system also. And, in, and as Arki is in, in urban environment, Lastu is really in a picturesque countryside place. And as a children's culture center, Lastu offers education, tutoring and peer support for those, anybody who works with children, children's culture. It offers workshops in Lastu at schools and kindergartens, alongside cultural happenings and in cultural organizations and it has a very large cooperative network and in the picture you can see the places of the children's culture centers Lastu is number three and when Lastu is working with all of these centers it 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 gives architecture education in in most of Finland and here you can see Lastus activities, basic education in architecture, building camps and camp schools, workshops and clubs, teaching projects, teacher education, developing materials and methods, happenings, exhibitions and adult ex education. <coughs> and some flashes to the activities. There is a hut village at Lastu's yard where they build more huts every year in the building camps. And it's, it stays there and it's quite a nice thing to have because you can actually see how, how the buildings grow old, what happens to, to wood when it gets wet and when it's in hard winter and it's really a good thing for the children. They will really see what happens in built environment in their own, own scale. And when you are working in countryside, it's perhaps easier to make a difference in everyday environment. You can do small things that everybody can see and it's for the joy of everyone. And in, in last two they arranged a lot of happenings where cultural heritage and building heritage and architecture education meet. And, and they also arrange adult education and in this case restoration courses. So that's also something that when children can follow the adults in their work, they also learn to, to how to raise, oh, I don't know the words now. But well, they learn from example when they see it. <coughs> How many minutes? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I have too many slides always. I'm sorry about that. Now I will uh, tell a little bit about Arkin for Finland, where I work as a promoter of architecture education at schools. First about us. So we were founded in 1912 by the five major organizations in the field of architecture. Museum of Finnish Architecture, Alvar, Alvar Aalto Foundation, Finnish Association of Architects, Association of Finnish Architects Offices and the Building Information Foundation. And ARC Info Finland acts as a hub for advancing general knowledge about architecture and boosts collaboration in the field. 
and it promotes, for example, architecture education, architecture policy, and international recognition of Finnish architecture. And I work there as a special advisor of architecture education for children and youth. And that means that I'm producing and sharing information through web-based data banks, following and taking part to the domestic and international networking and development of the field. And then I'm coordinating, producing, leading, authoring domestic cooperative projects. And at the moment, it's quite a lot of work. And there are, I have been working mainly with the schools, the ordinary schools, for example, by arranging teacher education, like the Messengers of Architecture course, which offered university level updating education of 20 ECTS, I don't know how to say that, <laughs> in architecture education for teachers. And today I will ta tell you, if I have time left, about two other projects, about Kirkkonum yesterday, today, tomorrow, to, which participated eighth and ninth grade pupils to a process of creating a mun municipality level architectural policy program. Sounds bad, but it wasn't so bad. Children in the city which highlights children as participants in urban planning as well as active users of urban space. First about the Kirkkonomi project, where young people were participating in creating guidelines for the future built environment. The cooperative parties were the municipality, us, and then the Uusima Regional Council, who was partially funding the project. The aims were to raise the young people's awareness of their environment, learn about young people's ideas of developing the town centre, develop architecture education for children and young people, produce regional and local pedagogical material and methods, develop applicable participatory operating models. And the methods and materials used were the same as used in artistic and creative design and planning processes and are available to all schools, like walking tours, using all senses for observation, working with maps, generating ideas by World Cafe method, sketching, drawing, drawing scale modeling, light painting, discussing, debating, making video commercials, and spatial inv invasion exercises. So, in this case, we had four subjects and four processes. The visual art process, the Finnish language process, the geography process, and the social science process. And here you can see the, the main, main needs of the children or the, their ideas of the developing the center. In visual arts, they said that they need places of their own. In Finnish classes, they said that you should pay special attention to public transportation. And geography, that the town center could be more compact and urban. And social science, that the town center back should, be, should go back to the old market square. All the ideas were presented in an exhi exhibition which presented the participatory process and its outputs. It highlighted the themes considered most important, 
and ask the audience to share their opinions. <coughs> and there was a closing seminar that brought planners, decision makers, politicians and citizens together, offered a possibility of sharing ideas, further discussed the most important topics. In this process we saw some challenges for example, by using the time. A visual art group, 12 times 90 minutes, was too much for the students, I think. And 90 minutes that we had in, in social science was absolutely not enough. There was not enough shared time with the teachers. And, and the motivating of some of the teenagers was really difficult. And then the communication problem. It was not between us and the students, but it was between all of us adults, with the people from the municipality, the city planning office, and us, and, and, and the municipality in general. There were some parallel projects that nobody knew about, which was a shame because we could have made so much more if we had had joined our forces. Time? <laughs> Five? Okay. And afterwards, we, when we started to analyze all the material, we thought that maybe it would be better if the, the process was more compact. So we, we are suggesting that there would be a one week project. Here it's called Baton model. You know what the baton is? It's, is it translated? It's the, when you are in a running competition, you give the baton to the next one. Yes. So we thought that the geography group could begin this. And, and it would then start with the history and formation of the landscape, the big picture formed by nature and built environment, from the, in this case, from the highest points of the town center and perspective of unsigned coastlines. And then the baton would go to the social science, which would continue by studying the conventions of town planning and processes of decision making. And perhaps look at the closer history of the town center and its buildings. And then the baton would go to the visual art group, who would take the tasked closer to the young people's needs. The students would first learn about the basics of architecture. They would observe, analyze, and va value their own places and envisage the future of the, of, of the uh, well, it means that they would, would do all the designing, drawings and modeling and, and that kind of thing. And in this, in Kirkonomi process, handcraft was not part of, part of our project, but it should have been because there was a bench that we actually built and the handcraft group could, could have done it also. And then the Finnish group which then takes care about the communication and tells everybody, everyone else about the process. And, and I think it would be best if the Finnish or the language group would be in every situation where the baton is given forward, so that they would have a sort of big picture about the whole process. Here you can see the bench that was designed by the children. It was actually prefabricated by a carpenter according to the plan uh, designs of the, the children. And then they were putting it together, building it together. And, and the children 
painted it according to te their ideas. And did we have an impact? Well, there was a pop-up community and youth cafe as a parallel project for a while. I don't know if we had anything to do with it or not, but it appeared suddenly. Small part of the schoolyard was renovated as a parallel project as well, and the self-made bench became part of it. There were lots of young people's opinions and great ideas. And the fact that young people were ready for more urban environment made the planners very happy. And it was a great learning processes, process for most of the students and for all of us adults. Now I know the minutes are going, but I'm going to just show shortly some pictures of, of children in this city project which is a two-part project that highlights children as participants in urban planning as well as active users of urban space. The project is supported by the Ministry of Education and Culture with funds for projects fulfilling the aims of the new Children's Cultural Policy Programme. Park project is a participatory project involving fourth grade pupils to a process of designing and a playground to Oulunsalo in northern Finland. The project aims at developing a working model of participating children for Park Department of Oulu City Planning Office, as well as producing educational material. And here you can see some individual ideas that the children have had, then the common ideas after a democracy process, and sharing the ideas with others, with an exhibition, and also meeting the media. And the children were, they were really teaching everybody and saying that we are the experts, experts of playing, playing, not you. And the other part of the pro project is Urban Space Agents, which is a series of 10 architectural workshops which are searching for ways of using the built environment as a learning environment. The workshops are authored and conducted by represent representatives of different art forms such as architecture, design, environmental art, music, theater, and dance. And the project aims at producing a guidebook or a website to ins inspire and encourage the teachers at schools to leave the classroom with their students and study the living built environment. And it also is trying to find an answer to the question, do children and young people see potential in urban spaces that are not really in use at the moment, that are empty? What would they do with them? And we have had some of these workshops already. Here our colleague from Estonia, Tallinn, who had a workshop where, they, where the children went, started with chairs and then went to square. So there, it was about sitting, ergo, the er, ergonomics of the chair and what could we do in a square with the chairs, how would we sit there, what kind of impact would it have, how could we improve the square. The second was, was street furniture in Pasila area, which is a very much concrete area altogether, and the children wanted to have some colors and street furniture. And on the left side, you can see a book kiosk where, you, where there is always a new and interesting book available, so you can read it in, in, the, in the bus stop, for example. Then we were greening the city in, with Nina Hummelin from Arki, and it, this happened in Espo Tapiola, which is a garden city actually, but the children wanted to make it even more greener. 
And then where the last example is science with sound. So we were making different kind of sounds in Hamenlinna city and recording them and, and researching them, how the sound, co sound goes over the water, how it sounds in different kind of, kind of environments. <laughs> Is it already <laughs> gone? <laughs> yes, okay, I'm, I'm finishing just. Uh, the key project of the government is giving us new chances and we are going to apply for some money to work to get even more architecture education all around Finland. And I will just read some thing I wrote yesterday to end this. When I, I started to work with children and architecture in 1996, in, in addition to studying architecture, I studied environmental education. It was mostly about nature. I thought that in order to reach a sustainable way of living, we should now know more about our built environment. We should not see it just as the opposite of the nature, but as a part of nature, and through positive lenses, with loving feelings. Our built environment, architecture, helps us to dwell in this planet of ours. Positive experiences are important. They cause positive actions. And uh, I hope I have said something useful to you. If any of you have any questions or want to know more about one of the projects or anything, just come and ask me and I will tell you. And you will find me from this address. And if you want to search me from, from the Facebook, I look like this in there. <laughs> there are many with the same name, so that's why I, I had to put the picture there. <laughs> okay, thank you very much.